The New Hampshire Digital Documents Depository Project has a new interface from PTFS. The way that we're going to manage our documents has changed dramatically. The new way is in fact simpler, but it's quite different. And there's a lot of tools that are not necessarily instinctive, and there are several options for how you can do various things. So rather than try to write everything down with lots of different options, uh, I'm recording a quick video to show you what you'll need to do and how you'll be able to do it. So the first thing that's different is that it looks different. When you come to the interface, um, this is what it'll look like. And you have a couple of options here on the search side. And this currently displayed is what the public sees. So this is not a logged in interface right now. It is just the public interface. Um, all of the text about how to search and different things is all included here on the screen. Um, the linking to a specific document note is still here, although it is actually not really needed anymore in this interface because there's a much easier way to do it. Um, the navigation on this side, both for the public and for the staff, gives you a number of different things. The default comes to the search tabs where you have filters, you have fields, and you have libraries. The filters uh, basically are you're searching what you can search for. Our public searching filters are very limited because our metadata is quite poor in cases like title. Um, so we don't want to lead people to believe that it's worth searching um, there for things that aren't really going to work. So these are really very limited fields for the public, and they are um, ones that should actually get them something valuable. This top search box for Boolean things is a full text search of all the documents, so that is the way to go for just finding miscellaneous stuff. Um, so, but back to the navigation for a minute. We have, if you, we have over here the searching by filter. The fields, whatever fields are checked, are the ones that are going to show in the results or that are going to be searchable. Um, at the moment, you could turn on things like title. We're going to have that removed so you can't even turn them on um, because we don't want patrons to use them because they're deceptive. Um, you also have libraries. All or digital document libraries are the only options available to the public at this point. But this is how you would maneuver through them. You also have My Folders. If you um, have saved any, you would have Exports and Downloads, and you'd have Searches. And these are only going to be for the current session for a non-logged-in public user. And if you came here and it did, you didn't find your search things, you get them by clicking the Search button to open it up again. OK, so if I want to clear a search that's already happened, I use this X, and it clears out whatever I had searched for and brings me back home. I can also get home by clicking on the little library icon. Um, but I don't believe that clears the search. It just takes me home. So to log in, I go to the public icon, which is the one that looks like a person, and I say log in. And it will open up a little box where I can put in my username and password. And if I did it right, it will sign me in. OK, so I come to this same home page um, that I had before. At this point, it looks pretty similar. The major differences here are because I am now a logged in user, any folders that I created before are available to me, if I had exported, if I have saved searches, things like that, um, I can access them from here. But the search interfaces are the same. As a logged in user, however, I also have, because I'm a staff user, um, some additional library options. At this point, the only one we're using most of the time is going to be the New Hampshire Digital Library documents. The temporary library is not going to be used going forward. There is some junk in there that we'll need to get cleared out, but for the purposes of our ongoing process, don't worry about the temporary library, and don't have it selected because it will cause confusion and difficulty in processing your records. So only choose New Hampshire Digital Library Doc, which I think is actually document depository, but that was too long. If you make a change here, 
you need to click the update button to apply your change. Okay, so your basic process for reviewing an agency's records when you uh, when it's time to review your agency data is you're going to come here, you're going to log in. You're going to select the agency that you're working on. I am going to choose the Business and Economic Affairs, the Bureau of Business and Economic Affairs, which is one of my agencies. And I get, you can see down here, 438 records is what's in the local repository altogether. This 500 over in the corner here tells me that I can. I am currently displaying 500 records at a time. If I click on that number, I get some more choices, and I can say I only want to see four, I want to see 25, I want to see 50, whatever. Whatever number I pick, that's how many I'm going to get. Um, 500 is probably a reasonably decent default, but if you're finding that they're really big and they're loading slowly or something, you can change your number. And as you can see, it changes pretty immediately. Okay, so the first thing is to get my right agency. The next thing is to, is to pull up just the records that are new that are not available to the public yet that need to be reviewed. I do that, so I chose Business and Economic Affairs up here, and it pulled up all those records. Now I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to choose Document Level Access, Staff Only. That refilters my search set to give me just the records that are new and are currently not visible to the public. So. This display that I have right here is they call the column display, and you can tell that because of this little pink icon is what it's chosen, so that's what we're displaying is. With this, I can scroll across to see different things. See, that proves that they're all staff only. Um, my call date, my ID, load dates, modified dates, the actual URL, which I know some of us use to sort into subdivisions and so forth. The little arrows here let me sort by whatever column. So if I click on the arrow, it will sort it. I have to scroll back again. Just pausing for emergency vehicles to go by. Okay, so I scroll across to see what we've got and you can sort it and by any of these things that have a little arrow. Um, so my first option is if I look at these records and they seem fine to me without any further review, I could just process them as a batch. Um, I can also make changes to one or any of them. I'm going to start by showing you how you would edit a record if you wish to do so um, individually. So looking at this, like click here doesn't look overly useful to me. It is the policy that we just accept whatever we find, so you are certainly welcome to do that. If you want to edit your record, you can also do that if the set is small enough and time allows. So here's how you would do that. I'm going to click on the record which opens it up here in an editing window for me. I can see what it is. It is the Safety Area Welcome and Information Center Brochure Program Distribution Policy Guidelines. That's a mouthful if I ever heard one. Okay, so I copied the title off my document and put it into the title field because that seemed like a good thing. I have an agency already assigned that is the correct agency, so I don't need to worry about that. I can give it a division because this particular agency has divisions defined for it. This is a travel and tourism document. I know that because it says so right on the document. So this is going in travel and tourism, business and economic development. I don't have a bureau here. I don't need document type, author, anything like that. Year published. I don't see a year published, um, so we're going to leave that blank because it doesn't really have one. Um, if I want to make this document public just as its own one, I'm going to choose New Hampshire Digital Library from the document level access, and then I'm going to save my record. Once I save it, it'll, it erases, or not erases, but it closes the edit form. If I want to open it again because I want to double check or I want to change something else, I can reload the edit form on this record. 
So once I'm in this edit interface, I can just edit one record and I would use this little X to close this and go back. But I can also flip through my set of records in the edit interface so that I can go through and do something to all of them if I want to. Um, so that's one option for editing the records is to go through record by record. It is, however, by no means the most efficient option. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back here to my data set and I'm going to look at my file path and if I had a lot of records I would sort it so that I can tell you know if there's a lot of them I don't have to look through every single one and keep track but there's only nine records here so I can just look at it these are all travel and tourism records I know that because they all say visit nh.gov as the file path so all of these records need to have their um, division applied to them and they all need to be set as um, public records. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose all nine records in my set and I do that with this little check mark box at the top. Previously we could check at the top of the column um, but that isn't how this one works. I can just check a particular box if I just want some of them but if I want to choose everything, I use this select all records on this page button. It's a great big check mark and then you can see all the records are chosen. So now I have to tell it what I want to do with all of these chosen records. I want to edit my search results and I want to batch edit. So this is something I'm going to do to all the records in my set. And I can see on this display what all the records are. So I have nine here. I could have lots and lots, but I have nine. In this particular case, what I want to do is I want to append a value in the selected records. In the field, there it is. So I have to click in the box, not on the arrow. In the field called um, what is it called? It is called division. Sorry, in the field called division, I want to use the travel and tourism development value. And in divisions and agencies and bureaus, you can only use things that are in that defined drop down list. And you'll notice in the list that it has both the division and then what's in brackets is the agency that that is a division of. And that isn't displaying that way in the records, but it's put into the list to help you know which agency goes with which thing. So travel and tourism development is the one that I want, and it's a business and economic affairs subdivision. And I'm going to click add a field. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I didn't want that. I want that one. If I could, I could add another one, but I don't need another one. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to say save. And all of my records now should have a division designation, which I am not displaying. But if I go back here and look at a single record, I now have division travel and tourism development. Okay, so I have made that change to all of my records. I have not made them public though. These records are still available only to staff. So they're all still chosen, but if I was unsure, I can unchoose them and choose them again. I can edit the search results again, batch edit, and I'm going to replace the existing values in selected records this time. I'm not adding values, I'm replacing what is there with something new. So in the field called uh, document level access, in, they, these all currently say staff only, I want to make them say New Hampshire Digital Library, which means it's a public record that someone can see. And I'm going to save. And it tells me they were successfully updated. Please wait for the records to process. So now I have made all nine of these records part of the Bureau of Business and Economic Affairs Division of Travel and Tourism. 
and have made them all public, so I have now reviewed all my records. With this interface, we don't need to delete files. We don't need to delete folders. We don't need to do any of that backing up through file designations that we needed to do in the old interface. We just make the records public, um, and then they're available. Now, if I want to make sure I picked up everything, I can come back here and clear my search and choose my agency again. And my agency is Business and Economic Affairs. And then I scroll down and say I want to see document level access staff only. And that should totally have come up with nothing. But maybe my editing didn't work yet. Yep, it is, so the indexer hasn't, <clears throat> I did it too fast, the indexer hasn't processed yet, because it is showing the, dig, the document level access here as digital library. So I can cancel that, I don't need it. So it did work, it just hasn't indexed yet, so it came up wrong. So that is your basic process for working on records, either individually to edit metadata, which as I said before, we don't necessarily have to do, but if you want to, that's how you do it to batch process them to make them staff only or to put them in to put the tags on them for a prop, the proper agencies and divisions. So that is the basic quick run through of how you're going to process your records for your agencies going forward. So if you have questions, let me know. Thank you.